Now, uh, we'd like to welcome everyone here. I'd like to uh, mention a few cu a couple of things before I get into my heritage today. Uh, first of all, uh, remind everyone that these webinars are recorded, as you just saw, and uh, they will be available on the BYU Family History Library website and also on the BYU um, Family History Library YouTube channel. So you can check the YouTube channel. There's uh, about, I think we're up to 650 or something like that or above number of videos up there and, and on about every subject. Uh, my heritage has changed a lot recently. Uh, you might have some questions and I would be glad to answer those, put those in the chat or in the Q&A. And we'll be glad to um, uh, answer everything at the end of the presentation. Um, my heritage and what you're looking at here in the background of the title on this slide is a 10 generation um, fan chart. So if you're uh, a fan of fan charts, then here you have kind of the ultimate way of doing that, assuming you put your family tree into my heritage and that actually and uh, actually have 10 generations to put in okay so that's uh, that's sort of the uh, uh the situation here uh, people uh, first thing they uh, people do when they look at a fan chart is just look for the the missing people and the answer is all of the missing people on this chart are missing for very very good reasons and uh they are they've been the uh uh, they've been under scrutiny and for and re historical research for a uh, little over a hundred years. So it's uh, it's quite a, an event when we actually move back one more uh, generation on the on one of these charts. Okay, well we'll get started here and get into the program. First of all, this is the uh, homepage and. Uh, some of the new features include this uh, new uh, customizable uh, homepage. So you can put your own photographs up on there. And uh, you can also X out the ads if you want to close them so they don't show. But uh, wanted to show what the typical homepage looks like right now. If you're used to the old homepage on MyHeritage or if you're coming to it new, it won't make any difference because this is what you'll get. But if you're look, if you're uh, coming back to the program, you'll say, well, where did everything go? And that's uh, a legitimate question to ask. And we'll, we'll go through that a little bit more in detail as I move along here. The first thing you absolutely need to do is to choose a MyHeritage account and start your tree. Uh, at the beginning here, I'm going to kind of summarize through the various um, options that uh, are available for uh, for people signing up to MyHeritage for the first time uh, or wanting to upgrade. The basic free site, it will handle up to 250 people and will give you 500 megabytes of storage for whatever you want to put up there. And then the next um, uh, level is a premium subscription, which raises the number of people up to 2,500, gives you phone support, Family Tree Builder, which is a desktop program that, that uh, synchronizes with MyHeritage online, if some of you are concerned about uh, the internet disappearing in the future, which probably may not, which is likely not to happen. Uh, smart matches, super search, and family sites, and my heritage DNA matches and more. So you get you get quite a bit with the premium uh, version of the program. Uh, what you get with the premium plus is you have unlimited number of people and uh, a lot more features. Uh, a lot more things are added to the premium plus program. You can imagine that there's going to be sort of a graduated increase in the cost. Uh, annual cost, but the annual cost overall for the ultimate ultimate, which is uh, we'll get to in a second, is uh, fairly reasonable compared to some of the other online uh, websites, particularly considering 
the, uh, the, the vast amount of, of information that's contained in this. And the, the top line here is the data subscription and its access to 15, point, uh, 15 plus billion records. And I just got an email today that says that they've added 337 million records this week. So when uh, MyHeritage doesn't add a few records at a time, they add them in the, uh, in the multi-millions of records when they start adding records. And all of the records on MyHeritage are indexed. All of the records on MyHeritage are indexed and searchable. But as we get into it more, you'll understand that the advantage, a real advantage of this program is having your family tree on the program. And then you get the benefits of the DNA, you get the benefits of, the, of all of the records, and you get the um, uh, basically what are called record matches, which are with the data subscription, which give you the access with of record hints to uh, all of these billions of records that are on the website. So then there's complete subscription and that's everything. So uh, if, you, if you get the premium plus, date plus the data, it's a complete subscription. And by the way, prices can change. So watch for sales. Um, there are times when it's less expensive to um, uh, subscribe than others. I would not wait, however, the difference in the actual prices is not, uh, not what I would consider to be con uh, sufficient to make you wait for a sale. Uh, it's not like you're, you, you may have be actually get something better on like a Black Friday, but uh, it's not that much better. Elder Taylor. Now, yes. Uh, people are asking, is it free to church members and which type of subscription is free? I will, I, the words are coming out of my mouth as you ask the question. Thank you. <laughs> Try it out for free at a family history center. What you have there, if you do, if you try out the MyHeritage program at a family history center is the library edition. Library edition does not let you put up a family tree. It lets you search for records, but that's about all that it does. And that's similar to the library edition of Ancestry, if any of you have been using uh, Ancestry in a library. But for those who are members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and uh, have they, they can take advantage of the Family Search My Heritage Partner account. And that is a free account, and it is the complete account. Uh, unlike other uh, websites, uh, large online genealogy websites that I won't mention at this moment, uh, unfortunately may have already mentioned. Not everything on the websites, uh, other websites is free. They have other programs and other websites that are affiliated and they charge you extra for each of those affiliated websites. Uh, my heritage does not have that kind of an arrangement. Every every website that they have that isn't incorporated, that's in, everything they has incorporated in their website. So, for example, uh, newspapers are a big issue with some of the other websites. They have separate newspaper accounts. My heritage incorporates all the newspapers, does all the searching for you, and gives you an overwhelming number of hits on the uh, U.S. web. Uh, newspapers uh, for some reasons we'll talk about as I go along. Um, the first thing I would suggest you do on my heritage, uh, you can you uh, L, the people who have a, an LDS account, a, a family search partner account through the church uh, can synchronize up to eight generations of their family search family tree into my heritage to get started. Now, if you've been working on uh, the family tree for a long time, I and and you're fairly certain that the first eight generations of your family are, uh, say, uh, respectively and and uh, 
exhaustively researched and that you're satisfied that the information is fairly stable and correct, then that's probably a good option. You can simply go through the process, which is uh, outlined in a lot of different articles and uh, other places. I'm not going to go clear through that process of subscribing and getting through. It's very, uh, I, the, the real reason I can't do it is because I've already got a subscription and I don't have any way to show the process. So that's, <laughs> that's how it looks. Uh, so that's the problem right now. But if I were sitting down with you, I could sit down and show you how it, the process works with somebody else. Basically, what you do is go through the registration process from the beginning, through starting with Family Search, not starting with My Heritage. And then, as you go through the process of re-registering, like you're re-registering, you'll click that you either have a, an existing My Heritage account or you do not. Either way, you'll be taken to a uh, a window that will have synchronized your information from family search, basically your your profile information, and you will have to put in a new password, which you can put in whatever password you like. The key here is your is your email address on MyHeritage. It needs it needs to be the same as the email address you have for family search because they're going to key it off of the email address. So don't go changing your email address on family search and then expect my heritage to work properly in synchronizing. And then there's a couple of links down on that little page that I can't show because I'm already registered. And every time I get there that I pull up the program. So I have no way to go to that anymore uh, is you can click on, uh, click on all of the little X's box. Say yes, you want to synchronize. Say yes, I want uh, I want the data and everything. And so once you've clicked in the boxes, it will start the process of synchronizing and building you a brand new family tree. If you already have a family tree on MyHeritage, this is a new family tree. Uh, it will uh, create a new, a complete uh, eight generation. Uh, family tree from family search on my heritage. Uh, I elected when I did that. I already had a substantially large. I've been on on my heritage now almost since they started, and I have a had a substantially larger tree than I, than eight generations on my heritage. But uh, I chose to go with the new tree because I would then be able to synchronize back and forth. Now there's some questions about the synchronization process. When you synchronize the, the between these two programs, uh, some of the data is carried across and some of the data is not changed. So you're not going to go, uh, in other words, if you make a big mess of your My Heritage family tree, uh, some of that may bleed over into family search. So you've got to be careful that you that you don't uh, make substantial changes or do changes to the unless you have them sourced. And what I would suggest, rather than relying solely on the synchronization process, is to focus on a specific line on any of these big websites, and MyHeritage or any of the others out there, Ancestry or Find My Past or whatever. And I would enter information that you're concerned about doing research on initially. You may want to fill it out with all the other information about your family because they give you, uh, for example, uh, I mentioned newspapers. Uh, I have been, uh, in a sense, harvesting newspaper uh, links for my parents, my grandparents, and my great grandparents that have been appearing on my heritage. And so there's a, a substantial number of those kinds of things that, that the program will provide. So, but if you're just coming to my heritage for the first time, and or you do not have an LDS account, uh, even if you have one, you may wish to do to start your family tree from scratch, meaning put in your name, your parents' names and your grandparents' names and some basic data about each of those and watch the program uh, build your family tree. I have watched and sat down with people and built a four generation family tree in about 45 minutes. And the key here is going to be that if you actually have, if you already have 
information on the family search family tree, uh, my heritage has access to all that and will give you record matches to all the people on the on the uh, family search tree. So you can build that very rapidly in any event, whether you decide you don't want to go through the, the synchronization process or not, you still have a connection there where it will look up all of the information that's available on the family search family tree. Now, the advantage, of course, to anyone doing research is that because of that fact, that my heritage has that uh, the connection with family search that you can you, the, the information as you change it on the family search family tree will not automatically be updated if you don't synchronize but if you do it uh, if you make changes you can find information on my heritage you simply have to uh, you can click on the number there's a, a link to the ID number for each person who appears on the family search family tree. So you don't have to go anywhere. You can just click that and go directly to that person on family search. So there's a really close connection between these two programs and there's a very good reason for that. Um, the question that always comes up is why, why are there free subscriptions for um, the, the members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints? The answer is, because there's a, a partnership, there's a trade-off. Uh, my heritage benefits by getting uh, access to records that it would not otherwise have access to. And Family Search benefits because my heritage indexes all the records they have access to. So uh, that is a, it's a tremendous benefit, not only to the users who are involved in the my heritage as far as both programs, but just people who are working off of family search uh, benefit whether they use my heritage or not from the fact that they they um, get additionally indexed records. Um, mentioning here that you can upload a GEDCOM file. Now, a GEDCOM file is a genealogical data communications file that is generated by most of the desktop programs. Um, there are programs like uh, Roots Magic and Ancestral Quest and uh, Heredis, or Heredis, or however it's said in French, French and uh, many other programs that, that uh, will let you download, upload a, a GEDCOM file. I just might, might have mentioned this because I am involved with the GEDCOM uh, process uh, with Family Search that uh, we have released a new version of GEDCOM, GEDCOM 7.0, after 25 years of not upgrading the program, uh, primarily due to technological changes that have occurred and that allow us to do an upgrade. The things that we needed to do to upgrade that program uh, did not exist 25 years ago. So we are now in the situation where we can move forward and uh, there will be announcements of, uh, there was announcements of all this uh, during the last year, uh, but uh, there'll be additional information on, on uh, Roots Tech that's coming up in uh, the end of February and first part of March. And which by the way is free this year and uh, online, everything is online and free and you can register right now at rootstech.org. So if you're interested in and seeing a couple of thousand videos put up on the, that week, then uh, you'll basically have a, a, a tremendous opportunity to learn things for free. And I emphasize this, that the LDS members can synchronize up to eight generations from the family search family tree. When you do this and click on the, yes, update my or synchronize my file, you, I, I suggest that it's not a really good idea to go uh, start making changes either to family search or to my heritage, but the process is done online. You don't have to sit there with your computer open and wait for it to upgrade. Uh, it usually takes, uh, it depends once the initial one may take an hour or two uh, of time to upgrade. These are very fast computers that they all use. So they do, uh, they do a pretty good job of, of transferring or creating the information. My heritage is available in 42 different languages. And uh, when we say that, um, 
uh, it's not like the situation where you have uh, Google Translate translating the website. Uh, they actually have the website set up to work in all these different languages. So depending on what uh, your particular background is, if you want to work in a Swedish or a Spanish or French or whatever, then you will have, um, you can set the language to whatever language you want, and that will be your primary language. Um, and this is very helpful. Now, the other part of this that's not uh, readily. No, Elder Tanner, can I interrupt just a second? Somebody sure. wants to know if you can sync only part of those eight generations when you start. Nope, nope. all or none. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, it's it's an all or none situation. One, one size fits all. If you have three generations, you'll get three generations. If you have a hundred generations, you'll still get eight generations. <laughs> but but it's easy to build. And like I wanted to emphasize that, maybe I didn't say that clearly enough. All of the family tree is connected to my heritage by searching. So my heritage will give you a link to every person you find in my heritage who is also on the family search family tree. And all you have to do is click on that and you can create and add that person into your family tree on MyHeritage. So you can, as fast as you can click, you can build a tree out of, out of family search if you wish to do it that way. Or after you've got eight generations, you'll see on my chart that I showed at the beginning of this was a 10 generation chart. I brought in eight generations. I now have almost 10 generations on, on uh, MyHeritage in that same file. So, uh, you know, and I haven't spent an inordinately large amount of time adding names to my heritage. They, I'll show you some things that, that speeds up that process immensely. Okay, but what I was gonna say about the, the language here is that um, uh, not only do they translate the website into those languages, but they translate all the, the names back and forth between all of these languages. If you do a search for John in uh, English and you're looking for a Spanish person, they will translate the name into Juan and look for Juan. And they will look for every uh, nickname and possible um, iteration of the name. Uh, it's, it's tremendously powerful. Uh, for, for example, when you're looking into any of the, uh, any of the countries, most, most uh, obviously useful to some of us is uh, the ability that it has to do searches in, uh, in all of the records in Denmark. And now uh, an ever increasing number of records in, in uh, Sweden. Just recently, my heritage increased the number of, uh, of all of the images and all of the indexes to the Swedish home censuses, the, the, the church censuses of the homes in Sweden back to 1800. So from 1800 up to the present time, uh, everything is indexed and everything is on and all of it and all the images are on my heritage now for essentially for LDS members for free. But that's that in its own case, by the way, is worth the subscription if you're doing Swedish research for having my heritage. That's that goes with almost goes without saying. Okay, so this is the view that you get with the family tree. Now, th this is uh, uh, you might call this the line view or the family view. Uh, there's various names for this. In Europe, this is not only the most common; it's nearly the only way that people look at their family trees. Uh, most of us who work with a standard pedigree. Uh, are, are saying, well, yeah, uh, what we'd like to see is a pedigree. Well, we'll show that in a second, but I wanna talk about this. Um, when we get to the pedigree, you'll find out that the information on a pedigree chart is not nearly as complete as the information here. Here, all the children are shown, all of the generations are shown, and all of the relationships and siblings in every family are shown. So even though it's a, it's, it's a measure of, of uh, 
navigating around on the family tree, it really is a, a very efficient way. Uh, you also have little rabbit ears. I don't know if you can see my cursor, but if you can look at the uh, Henry Martin Tanner down in the sort of uh, left hand, uh, almost to the corner. And you'll see little rabbit ears and other places you'll see little two things sticking up. Uh, that means there's additional generations. So if you click on those rabbit ears, it will expand the, um, the, the view to uh, Henry Martin Tanner or uh, Marianne Brighton's or James Chattel's ancestors. So this is, uh, this is the way, and you can see above, you can add mother, add father. And this view, by the way, has changed substantially over the past year. Uh, it was much, um, had much, much more cluttered, I might call it that, before they uh, simplified it quite a bit. And the, the other view that you can see, so this is the family view up here in the upper corner where you check, check the family view. And then the next view is the pedigree view, and that's the next one in the line. And this is a standard pedigree view. And what you're used to on, uh, on any kind of a pedigree chart here in the United States that people use generally. Um, the problem with the pedigree chart, which I ran into with the patron from the BYU Family History Library just the other day, was he was looking at this and saying, well, where are all the children? Where, where's, where's my aunts and uncles on here? And the answer is, well, this is a pedigree chart, it doesn't have those things. So he said, well, what use is it? <laughs> and so uh, from the standpoint of someone who is accustomed to a line chart, uh, the amount of information that's cut out of this chart makes it somewhat less useful. By the way, you can click on any name there and see all of their collect connections, but uh, sometimes that, uh, that, that, that kind of, from my standpoint, it's easier for me to navigate this but it is also, uh, I also know how to get all the information about every family just by clicking in a matter of a few clicks. So it's, uh, it's efficient in some ways, but it's, uh, it lacks information in other ways. The third view, of course, that I've already shown in this startup is the fan view. And the fan view is um, uh, essentially what it turns out to be is kind of a, a different view of the pedigree chart because it only came, contains the same amount of information. Uh, people like it because they seem to think that uh, they're going to shoot for the holes. In other words, th this is the motivation. Oh, we're going to find out who Susanna Dexter's or Anne, whoever Anne is, who their parents are, or Sarah Scott in this particular case. Um, the answer here is uh, what I said earlier. Uh, in my case, they've spent a, we spent uh, my me and my uh, uh, ancestors have spent over a hundred years looking for some of these people without any without any success. Um, I have uh, worked on the what we might call brick walls or end of lines. Uh, for many, many years now, since I started doing this. And uh, we have successfully gone back six generations, but that's, you know, that isn't, that isn't the way there's, you know, there's no way you're gonna go much further without uh, having some records show up that aren't uh, per presently available. So you can have up to 10 generations, as I mentioned at the beginning of this fan chart, which is pretty neat. And you can print it off, by the way. Um, you'd have to have a pretty big printer to get it so you could read it. But uh, anyway, it's, it's a nice thing to have. And then what we have here um, is a list of all the people, starting with those that are, uh, these are, you'll notice very quickly that there are no, um, uh, living people, well, there are living people. You can put living people, but they're not visible to anyone else. And they just come up with the name living. So you're not have to worry about living people being seen or shared or whatever you want to do. But uh, anyone who is marked deceased, of course, will be viewable. Um, this is, I would call this a semi uh, 
what I say shareable family tree. Uh, the way it's set up, sharing information is the basis of how how my heritage exists and why it exists and why it's such a, a tremendously large program in the world. And we'll get into that. Uh, but uh, basically, not having your family tree shared is, uh, from my standpoint, is very short-sighted because you're not going to live forever. And when you die, if you don't, if somebody doesn't pick up the work you've done and continue it, uh, you've just lost all your life's work. So uh, once you share it on a family tree where you have other people have access, then uh, like the family search family tree, which is the ultimate um, compatible uh, compromise uh, when you're working together uh, to make a family tree. Okay, so now we're through with the list view. So the first step, of course, is to add the people that you know. And if you do that through a synchronization, that solves about eight generations worth. But if you enter them one by one, uh, I suspect that you'll pretty soon have hundreds, if not thousands of people on your family tree. Uh, rather surprisingly, you may be very, very surprised at uh, how the family tree. Now, what if you were an orphan and uh, you die, you're, you never knew your parents and you don't know who your parents are and all both of your parents were orphans and all four of your grandparents were orphans. Okay, well, you, you need DNA. You, you will find that that's the only way that you're gonna make any headway is to do DNA testing. Uh, otherwise, uh, you will be surprised at the amount of information that's, that's available here for living and for dead people, by the way. Um, don't be surprised. Well, when you, uh, you, you may not be aware that both Family Search and My Heritage have uh, about um, 80 million records, maybe even more than that, maybe almost close to a billion, but it's, eight, around eight, it's a huge number. Let's not try to put a number on it, but it's a huge number of public record information from the United States that includes registrations like car registrations and voting records and, and uh, real estate records and all sorts of things. So don't be surprised when you go into MyHeritage that if you go putting in your own uh, record matches where they're suggesting records for you, that you may end up with uh, a list of all the places you've ever lived and all the places that your parents have ever lived and I found people when we when they start looking at this, they go, "Well, I didn't know my parents live there." And so basically, it's information that you may never have have even been transmitted to you in your in your um, family. So if you want to change something, it's the little pencil mark there. It's called a quick edit. And if you click on that quick edit, then you will have a sheet that gives you um, the basic information about this person. And you can edit more down at the bottom. And you'll see over on the left-hand side where it says Thomas Parkinson, 1830-1906, it says family search and then it has Thomas Parkinson's ID number. Uh, one of the benefits of this, by the way, is that my heritage finds all the Thomas Parkinson's on family search. And so as you go down the list, you may find out that there are more than one or two or five or 10 duplicate records for this ancestor that, by the way, had not for some reason shown up on family search, but now are being found by MyHeritage because they're doing a search of the entire web website uh, and using highly sophisticated search techniques. So uh, one of the other side benefits is that uh, uh, duplicate records on family search may start showing up. You can't really do anything with those from here, but by clicking on the link and uh, you'll be, by clicking on the uh, record matches that come up, you'll be able to see the uh, ID number for each of the matching records and uh, use those to merge by ID 
on uh, family search. So it's a, a kind of a side benefit of the program. Now I suggest you explore the other features. Um, this is uh, where people get worried um, because they um, can't, uh, they don't necessarily have, are comfortable and they think that uh, uh, they're gonna break something. Well, you're not gonna break anything on MyHeritage for sure. And so I would suggest you just click around until you do. But if it says erase all, don't use that. I mean, there's, there's limits obviously. So uh, don't, don't de de delete your tree or anything uh, drastic, but you can, you could delete your tree, but don't do it. Okay. Next, we're gonna take a look at what happens when you click. When you click on Thomas Parkinson, you get, uh, first of all, you get his profile. You can click and do, this is the profile. It's all the information that you have about, and it's exhaustive information that we have. Now, the next thing that you click on is you can click on edit, and that will give you that same edit um, screen that we had a minute ago. And add, you can add a brother, a sister, another partner, a son, or a daughter. And then there's a long list of view the tree, edit photos, move, remove connection, delete this person. So you can do, and one of the things that is a little bit strange about um, my heritage from Family Search, if you're used to Family Search, is that uh, there's no merge capability. You can't merge people on on my heritage. You delete the the duplicates. So it's kind of up to you to to salvage any information from the duplicates before you delete them. Uh, if there happens to be anything in those duplicates that is not in the, the person you want to, to preserve. But it'll be, it's easy enough to find the duplicates because they show up every time you, you do a search for, for that person. Okay, so let's move along here. This is your profile. When you click on your profile on MyHeritage, what you're gonna get is your account settings, your site settings, and all sorts of information. I just suggest you go down there and learn that. The one thing you might want to know is your account settings because that verifies that you have a uh, complete account and also uh, your site settings uh, because uh, that will tell you um, give you the option of changing some of the ways that the, the names are just are viewed from showing the, the maiden name or showing the married name and, or whatever you like to do, however you like to do it. So that's your profile and check that out. The next thing you want to do is do a person discovery. Um, and you want to explore the discoveries. And this is the discovery list. First of all, you can, uh, can look for matches by people. That will give you uh, the records. Uh, at this case, you can see I have 3,415 people in my file and I have 71,307 records sitting out there waiting for me to process. And yes, you will get hints like rain falling out of the sky. Well, except here, it doesn't rain, but uh, perhaps you live someplace where it rains, so it might be a good analogy. Um, so matches by people mean that you'll get a list of all the people who have matches. And here's so example of what they have. So this first person has three, the second person has 42, the third person has 25. These are records. These are records that have this a suggested record hints that have these people. So down here, when you're getting down, you see 80, yes, that's real, 88 matches for one person. That means there's a ton of information sitting out there waiting. I just, you can't imagine how frustrating it is to, that you're not gonna live forever and do this. Elder okay, Ken, yeah. There's a question that, and Anonymous is saying, I get hints almost every week. If I click ignore because I don't have time to look right then, will the hint still be somewhere in the record or will it permanently go away? It's not a good idea to ignore hints. That means it's gonna be ignored, period. Okay, and then there's another question in the Q&A. I, I would just leave them there. 
uh, they accumulate. So just leave them. Don't worry about them, but don't don't dismiss them unless you don't you actually do not want that hand at all. Okay. Unless it's wrong or whatever, you know, it can be wrong. So don't. But then there's yeah. another, another question. Can non-church members also have linkage to family search? By using the family search ID number on the same ancestor in their MyHeritage tree, um, I'm not sure that um, MyHeritage searches the family tree or shows that information from uh, a uh, from someone who is not a, a family search partner uh, program. Somebody could answer that if they're out there and they have a uh, uh, a whips. Uh, a My Heritage uh, subscription that is not uh, connected to a family search partner. Uh, if you are getting My Heritage, I mean, if if you're getting family tree searches, then yeah. But otherwise, I don't know. I I haven't. That's not a question I've had answered or asked. I can find out, but put it in the you know, send me an email or send us an email, and I'll look that up and see what the answer is. Find somebody who has it. Okay, we're going to move along. I'm sorry, we got to move fast now. Um, I mentioned that they can build your tree rather quickly. Well, they have what are called instant discoveries. And in this case, they are verified with sources and cross verified by people who have used those sources in the family tree. You can accept all of the, the new discoveries or some of them or none of them. You don't have to, to do it, but if it goes away, it goes away. It's just like everything else. So you just let them sit here until you you have time to go through and, and check and verify whether you want the information to be added to your tree. But if it is something you just automatically know, like the one down here that says add five personal photos. Yes, I know who all those people are. Yes, I could view that. And probably I would add all those photos. Uh, record matches and smart matches. Record matches are the brown dots. Smart matches are the green dots. The difference is record matches match to people. Smart matches, ma I mean to records. Smart matches match to people in other trees. This is not a name. They're not telling you that you have somebody the same name in another family tree. What they're saying is, if you look at all of the ancestors back generations of Thomas Parkinson that are in the in your family tree and all of his descendants, you will find the same pattern of people in another family tree. So smart matches are tremendously valuable to people who do not have access to, um, jet, you know, obviously easy access or at access at all. To records such as people who live in Eastern Europe or have ancestors in countries where records are not readily available. A smart match may get you in contact with a relative in that country who is there speaking the language and also interested in genealogy. Collections. This is the, this is the catalog of all their records. You'll see the 15 billion, 732 million, so forth records up there. That's an unimaginable number of records. And uh, this will tell you exactly what is there. And you'll see on the fourth record down, US public records and oh, it's 816 million. So I should have gone with my first memory. Uh, it is 800 million records of here of everybody in the United States living and some dead people, obviously. They're still on the public records. Um, family search family tree is shown here. This would be easy in a way to find out if your uh, if your is to look at the collections catalog, the collections catalog is up under the research tab, uh, under in the upper upper right hand corner where it says research in red, and so there you're doing. I'm just going to skip through this a little bit quickly. The tree consistency checker checks um, 38 or plus different uh, things that may be wrong with your computer with your, your uh, file. Uh, if, you, if you run this, it may be very discouraging because you'll find out that you have so many people that you didn't really, really realize were not working. So you have people that are born after the death of a parent. Uh, some of these are come out in family search with the red exclamation points, but not 
nearly to the extent that, that of this. And there could be hundreds, even thousands of, uh, of inconsistencies in your file when you get it run. Working through the inconsistencies is extremely helpful because every time there's an inconsistency, it means that um, there may be another family or you may need uh, to develop additional information about that family. So it's kind of a way to find uh, things to do if you are really lacking things to do. Pedigree map is extremely useful more detailed and more uh, specific than many of the other uh, websites when they show you where your ancestors came from because it shows you every single little place they're from and it gets you the ability to show exactly where a group of people came from from one area all of this is extremely helpful to what's called cluster research so if you're doing uh, or know about cluster research this is like a a super tool for uh, getting the information that you would normally end up putting into a spreadsheet or, or mapping yourself on Google Maps or something like that. Um, photos, uh, just as we get here close to the end. Uh, one thing you'll find about um, photos is that um, you can enhance, colorize, and animate them. So if you do that, so here we have uh, Leroy Parkinson, Tanner, and Clara Peterson. And uh, this is the original photo. And then we go click enhance and the little tool runs around and there's the enhanced version. So if you move that over, you'll see that there's been a substantial increase in the resolution can also colorize the photos. So if you click the little colorize tool, then you have the whole thing colorized. Uh, this, is, this is part of the subscription. It's uh, uh, basically if, if you upload photos, uh, you can uh, upload photos and keep them there or do something else. Here you select a face to animate and it does the animation. And this is rather spooky. This usually freaks people out when they see this the first time because that's your uh, grandfather or your great-grandfather or whoever, and uh, you uh, didn't ever believe that was possible. But those are the things that are included in, uh, uh, there's also a repair where you can repair a photo. And here's a, a copy of the photo on the left was the original, and the photo on the right is the repaired photo. Not perfect, but it's certainly a lot better than the one that was on the left. And so this is all done for free inside the program. You don't pay any extra for this. And uh, if you're wanting to just fix one of your photos and, uh, and you happen to have my heritage in a subscription, you can go ahead and do this uh, without even putting them onto the program. Of course, when you upload them to do it, it's already in the program. So unless you delete them afterwards. Uh, DNA, a uh, big thing big part of, uh, of, of my heritage, it would be uh, something that we would do a complete different presentation on. But uh, your ethnicity estimates uh, are getting more and more accurate over time. If you have old ethnicity estimates and new ones, uh, you'll know that uh, there's quite a difference. Uh, this was, uh, uh, this is a newer ethnicity estimate for me. Uh, here's uh, the even newer, newer one. Uh, so you can see that uh, the estimates have become more focused. I still have no idea who I have in my ancestry in Italy and, and uh, in the Middle East. Uh, and I have no idea who I have in Latvia, Lithuania, and Belarus. So someday we may find that. This is what, if you take a DNA test with any other of the major testing companies, you can upload those results, the raw data to, fam, to MyHeritage. But if you, uh, if you haven't had a DNA test or want to take one, um, there was a very good deal going on a couple of weeks ago, but now it's um, uh, the regular price. 
it's worth the regular price and uh, the, the uh, amount of information you can get. Um, you can tell from the numbers that uh, I've shown you so far on my, my, my heritage file that I have a lot of relatives and I'm related to a lot of identifiable people because I have like 10,974 DNA matches. That means out of the approximately 80 million people on my heritage, 10,974 of them match my DNA. Um, now that number of 80 million is worldwide. And uh, the major majority of those people are um, users of the program are in Europe uh, and Eastern and Western Europe. And so uh, this is the, the maximum place where you'll probably get good matches, but they have people all over the world. You also get very specific information about the DNA, including uh, some of the, of course, the segments and things that people do when they analyze DNA. This is an extra bonus. This is the theory of family relativity. And what uh, my, my heritage is doing is taking all of the information that's been provided to the program on Family Search and in their program here and tracing back uh, your um, uh, common ancestors with people who uh, may have DNA matches or may have um, your match. It, this is becoming very much more sophisticated as time goes on. Uh, the problem, of course, is that DNA matches only work back, back about four or five, six generations max before, they're, before the numbers are too small to be significant. So it's, uh, it's going to be a kind of a bonus if you haven't, uh, if you don't know this information, it's extremely helpful. Uh, from my standpoint, it's helpful because the, it finds uh, descendancy lines that I may have not been aware of. There's way too many features on the program to cover in an hour. And so basically we are, uh, uh, you know, that we're about to, to the point where I have to go on. I'm going to mention also at the end here, Family History Guide has a uh, is a free website, structured educational website that uh, has specific step-by-step -step instructions for MyHeritage, uh, for, the, my, for the getting into the MyHeritage account and getting into uh, all of the, a lot of the uh, features of the program. So it's, it's a good place to start. Here's the instructions and step-by-step uh, -step that you might need. It's Family Search, uh, the Family History Guide is thefhguide.com. And so if you get on, if you haven't been aware of it, it has instructions for Family Search and also a detailed um, searching uh, record information about the records in, in every major country uh, of the world that has records. So it's a good place to start uh, getting information about any particular country's records. Okay, well, thanks for watching.